Let us now look at different ways of how we can represent numbers. So if we have a binary vector that is of length n, and we write this vector as x, which equals, and the entries in the vectors are x sub n minus 1, n minus 2, and so on, until x0. This vector can represent 2 to the n different numbers because we have 0 or 1 in each of the entries in the vector, and we have size n of the vector. One way of representing this as a number is to use the function that we're going to call phi, and phi of the vector x is now written as the sum where i goes from 0 to n minus 1, and we have xi times 2 to the i. And if we expand this, we can write this as follows, and here we start from the back, because this is typically how we write the numbers in the vector, so we have x0 plus x1 times 2, and up until xn minus 1 times 2 to the n minus 1. And when we do it in this way, we are going to call xn minus 1 the most significant bit in our vector, and we're going to call x0 the least significant bit in our vector. Often it can be convenient to write our binary vectors in a more compact format. That we can do using, for example, the basis 8, which we call octal numbers, or to use the basis 16, and then we call it hexadecimal numbers. For octal numbers, we use the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And this will give us eight different digits. And since 8 is 2 to the 3, this will correspond to exactly three bits per digit. So if we take an example of the decimal number 245, and we indicate that this is a decimal number by using the base 10, like this. This can be written in binary form as 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And since we now have 8 different bits here, we need to add 1 bit in order to have a multiple of 3 bits. So what we do is that we add a 0 here. So now we have three groups of three bits each. And if we look at the groups one by one, we can see that this last group here corresponds to a five. The next group corresponds to six. And the first group would correspond to a three. So this means that we can write 245 in decimal notation as the number 365 in octal notation, and that we indicate by putting an 8 here as an index. And we have a similar situation for the hexadecimal numbers, but here we need 16 different symbols in order to represent our numbers. And the first 10, we just take the normal digits that we have, 0 to 9, and then for the last six symbols, we typically use A, B, C, D, E, and F, which are the first six letters in the alphabet. And the main reason why hexadecimal numbers are interesting is that 16 is a power of 2. So 16 can be written as 2 to the 4, which means that it corresponds to 4 bits per digit. So we can make the same example again, where we use 245 in decimal notation, which we indicate by a 10 here. We can write this first in binary notation, which will give us 1, 1, 1, 1, and then 0, 1, 0, 1. And here, since we already have a multiple of 4 bits, so we have 8 bits, so we have 4 bits here and 4 bits here, we do not need to pad it with more bits as we had to do in the case for octal numbers. If we look at the symbols that we want to use here, the symbol that we have here, the last one, this is 0, 1, 0, 1, so this equals 5. And the next symbol here, 1, 1, 1, 1, will equal 15, and if we go to our alphabet that we use here with symbols, we see that 15 corresponds to the letter F. So this we write as an F. So this 245 in base 10, we can write as F5, in this case in base 16, which is our hexadecimal numbers. So as you can see, the main reason for writing it in octal or hexadecimal notation is that we have a more compact representation of our binary numbers. So instead of using here 
eight different digits, we instead use only two. And in the octal case, we use instead three digits instead to represent the numbers. And the reason why 10 is not so convenient to use as a base is that 10 is not a power of two. So we cannot group our binary uh, digits in this way as we can in the octal and hexadecimal numbers. If you want to go from our ordinary base 10 format into the binary form, we need to find the inverse of our function that we call phi. The inverse of this function can be derived using the fact that we can write the number n as 2 times q plus the remainder r. And since the remainder is less than our divisor, then r will be in the set 0 or 1. So we use our example with 245 which we then can write as 2 times 122 plus 1. 122 can be written as 2 times 61 plus 0. 61 can be written as 2 times 30 plus 1. 30 can be written as 2 times 15 plus 0. 15 can be written as 2 times 7 plus 1. 7 can be written as 2 times 3 plus 1. 3 can be written as 2 times 1 plus 1. And 1 can be written as 2 times 0 plus 1. So here we have our least significant bit, which is 1. And our most significant bit here is also a 1. So 245 in the base 10 can be written in base 2 as 1 1 1 1 and then 0 1 0 1. So we go from the bottom here starting with the MSB to the top with the LSB. So this is our 245 in base 2 which we can if we want also clarify by using a 2 here.